everybody to the virtual summer enrichment program here at the Guild Museum. This week we're going to be looking at paleontology from bones to stones and we're really excited to have you here. In this program we're going to be talking about paleontology and the work that paleontologists do and we're going to get a special look at some of the fossils that we have in the museum's collection including a trilobite and coprolite and you'll find out what that is later. In your kits, you'll find a yellow journal. This is for you to help you keep notes. There's a lot of fun information that I'm going to give you during this video and you want to make sure that you remember it all just like real paleontologists. Here in our museum collection, we actually have several different types of fossils. The first one that we have is called petrified wood and this is about 15 million years old. Petrified wood is actually wood that goes through this process called petrification where it literally becomes solid like a rock and you see you could have or you can see the rings of the tree but if I tap it it sounds just like a rock. The next one that we have is a mosasaurus tooth. This Mosasaurus tooth is about 65 million years ago, which means that it is from the Jurassic period. And a Mosasaur was actually not a dinosaur, but it was actually an aquatic marine reptile that actually swam through the waters. As you may already know, Arcadia actually used to be under the water, so it's very likely that Mosasaurs swam through ancient Arcadia. The next fossil that we have is one of my favorites. It's coprolite. Do you know what coprolite is? Coprolite is actually fossilized dinosaur poop. And this coprolite is about 65 million years old and it's from the Jurassic period. And this was the last period in time that dinosaurs were alive. And we have this nice big piece of dinosaur poop, coprolite, and we also have some smaller pieces right here. And our last fossil that we're going to be looking at is a trilobite. This is the oldest of our fossils. It's about 250 million years old. This trilobite is from the Paleozoic period and trilobites actually used to be very large prehistoric insects. Can you imagine what it would be like to come across an insect that was this big? Here we have more examples of fossils from the museum's collection. These actually aren't real fossils, but they're actually casts that are based off of real fossils. And we have them in our collection for teaching purposes, like for this video. So to start off with, we have these. You can guess what these are. These are the teeth of a saber-toothed cat, which existed during the Ice Age. And these actually were not used for hunting, but they were just used for decoration. Next, we have this one. This is also a tooth. This is from a megalodon, which was an extinct species of shark that lived during the Miocene about 23 to 3.6 million years ago. And megalodon actually just translates to big tooth. And megalodons have descendants that live today, which are actually great white sharks. And here we have the tooth of a great white shark. So can you see the difference? And lastly, we have one of my favorite parts of our fossil collection, which is this. Do you think you can guess what it is? This is actually a tooth from a Tyrannosaurus rex. Their teeth could go to be as big as bananas and they would snap off easily, which was excellent when they were hunting other creatures. Mm -hmm. Do you think it looks big compared to my teeth? The word paleontologist comes from the ancient Greek word paleo, which means prehistoric, and ologist, which means someone who studies. So paleontologists study prehistoric things. Paleontologists could study ancient Arcadia. About 300 million years ago, Arcadia was actually under the water. This was far before any humans or buildings or peacocks roam the area. There are also no dinosaurs in prehistoric Arcadia. Since it was under the ocean, there were no dinosaurs, but in fact, 
these things called plesiosaurs. Plesiosaurs were very early marine reptiles. They had very long necks and they had bullet shaped bodies and they swam with paddles and they kind of swam like today's sea turtles but without shells. In this activity we're going to be looking at fossils. Fossils are the physical evidence of creatures that existed a long long time ago. In your kit you'll find one of several different types of fossils. You might find a trilobite, a horseshoe crab, an ammonite, a dinosaur claw, or a fossilized fish. And today we're going to paint our fossils. Okay, I'm going to paint an ammonite. So for this activity, you're going to need some watercolors, water, and a paintbrush. And you can paint your fossil however you'd like. I'm going to go for some purple. Many years ago, people didn't really know what fossils were and they didn't really understand them. It wasn't until the 1600s that people really started to look at fossils and understand what they were. And fossils are created when an animal passes away and is covered by sediment. And that sediment will cover their bones and protect them for a really long time. And of course, the most popular fossils that everybody knows about are dinosaurs. And there you go, I have my nice blue and purple fossil. What colors are you going to paint your fossil? Paleontologists study fossils, but when fossils were first discovered, scientists actually did not really understand what they were. In the year 1676, a man named Robert Plott found a thigh bone that belonged to a dinosaur, but as people did not know what dinosaurs were at the time, he did not really know what he was looking at and thought that the bone belonged to a large human. It was not until 1841 that people really began to understand what dinosaurs were, when a man named Richard Owen looked at the teeth and bones that he had found and realized that they were unlike any living creature. And since people did not begin to understand what dinosaurs were until 1841, that means that people like George Washington did not know what dinosaurs were because they had not yet been discovered. In this next activity, we're actually going to be making our own fossils. And of course, fossils are organic materials that turn to stone over long periods of time. But we're gonna take a little bit of a shortcut today. So in your kit, you're going to find a little dinosaur and you can see mine is a green stegosaurus. And you're also going to find a small ball of clay. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your clay and you're going to flatten it a little bit with your hands. You could use the table too. But you don't want it to be too flat, but you do want it to be big enough so that you can make an imprint of your dinosaur. So. Once you're done, it'll look a little bit like this. Just place it flat on the table, take your dinosaur, and then you're going to put it side down and you're going to press it into your clay. Okay, and then you're just going to wait a moment and you're going to carefully peel it off. And there you go. You'll have a fossil of your dinosaur. To complete the process of making your fossil, you have to make sure that you leave your imprint to dry and you might want to leave it outside in the sun and it could dry really quickly and then you'll see that it's going to be hard as rock like a fossil. Back when dinosaurs were first being discovered, paleontologists raced to discover new, different types of dinosaurs. And in fact, two paleontologists became rivals and both hoped to discover more dinosaurs than the other. Their names were Edward Drinkercope and Othniel Marsh. 
both looked all over the United States to find new, different dinosaur fossils. But as much as they tried to find and examine new dinosaur specimens, they did not always know how they fit together. In 1868, Edward Cope found a new set of dinosaur bones that he called Elasmosaurus platyrus, and he wrote about his new finding in the American Philosophical Society Journal. But in his rush to reconstruct this new dinosaur, he made a mistake and positioned the skull at the end of the tail instead of at the end of the neck. Cope's rival, Marsh, was quick to point out the mistake, and Cope became very embarrassed. He tried to purchase all the known copies of the American Philosophical Society journal that had published his mistake, but could not purchase them all in time, and his mistake became public. Now we're going to see if we could put together dinosaur skeletons like Edward Cope and Othniel Charles Marsh. In your kit, you might find the bones to a T-Rex, or a triceratops. What you're going to do is you're going to take your bones as well as your construction paper and a drawing implement and I'm going to choose a black crayon. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your bones and you're going to arrange them on your construction paper and if you need help you could definitely ask a parent and we'll also post what the proper ways to put them together are just so that everybody's on the same page. And I'm going to do my little Triceratops. Um, you can see that I have my Triceratops right here. My good friend. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take your drawing implement and you're going to actually draw around it and see what that dinosaur might look like if it was actually alive. Once you have your dinosaur bones assembled, make sure you label your construction paper with the type of dinosaur that you have found in your kit. And remember, you can either find a T-Rex or a Triceratops. Next, you're going to use your drawing implement, and I have my black crayon, and we're going to draw an outline around our dinosaur. It's very important to remember that paleontologists actually do not know what dinosaurs look like when they were alive. And since things like fat, tissue, and muscle cannot usually be fossilized, scientists are actually unsure of how big dinosaurs were in relation to the size of their skeletons. Chickens and penguins, for example, have small skeletons but are very big in comparison because they have a lot of fat. And once you have traced your dinosaur, you can take your outline and give your dinosaur some details like eyes or the crest behind the head of the Triceratops to try to understand what it looked like when it was actually alive. Thank you so much for joining us for this week for paleontology from bones to stones. Make sure to join us next week where we talk about nature and nature explorers. And if you really liked this program, make sure to tag us in your social media with the hashtag GILBSEP2020 or you could send us an email with all of your pictures of you having fun in this program. We'll see you next time. Bye!